when did Twilio start? And then when did you cross the 1 million mark in yearly revenue? Just to yeah, start to benchmark it. So we started the company very beginning of 2008. So 2008, myself, John, Evan, all three of us developers, and we had this idea. We said, you know, from my experience and all the companies that I had started prior, so I had started my first company when I was still in college. Then I was the first CTO of StubHub. Then I was one of the, um, uh, or started a bricks and mortar retailer actually doing extreme sporting goods of all things. Wow. Then I was one of the first product managers at Amazon Web Services. And when I left Amazon, was thinking about what I wanted to start next because I knew I wanted to start my next thing. And I realized that at every single one of those companies, there were really two things in common, right? First was the fact that we were using the power of software mm. to build a better product and a better customer experience than anything that existed uh, to date in those industries. And even though like my startups that I had done before were very different from each other. My first company was an academic content company for college students. My second company was you know live event tickets, concerts, sporting events, yeah. StubHub. And then my third company was bricks and mortar for skateboarding and snowboarding and surfing. Like These businesses could not have been more different from each other yet. And every single one of them, we were using the power of software to build a better company and a better customer experience. And to me, that always meant, well, you listen to customers, you go out and build something, you put it out there in front of the customers, you get feedback, and then you keep iterating your way towards a better and better and better product and a mm -hmm. better customer experience. And the job of a software developer and a software-minded company is never done. You're always listening to customers and hearing how you can create a better product. And so that iterative spirit of software was key to every company that I had started prior. So take StubHub, for example. Yeah. We went from the first line of code written to launch in six weeks. Wow. Right, that's like agile. Like that to me is like, this is what it's all about. Uh, but then the other common thread among all those companies was that you needed communications in order to build a great relationship with your customer. Right. And every time we ran into these ideas, we'd say, oh, well, yeah, if a customer calls us, let's let, we, we can you know, give them this information or, or let's reach out to customers when this happens, when their package ships, when their cars, right, whatever it is. And every time we said, oh, yeah, that's an amazing idea. But I'm a software developer, like making mm. a phone ring, like having some voltage appear on a phone line somewhere in the world, like that's magic. I have no yeah. idea how that works. Yeah. And so we turned to the companies that seemed like they did know. We turned to carriers or like, you know, Cisco and say, how do we do this? And every time it was the same answer. It was like, hey, we can help you with that. You know, first thing, we're going to roll out a bunch of copper wire from a carrier to your data center. Then we're going to rack up a bunch of like telco hardware. Then you're going to buy a whole software stack that's on top of it. And then we need to integrate it all. And then we need to integrate it with your systems and build the thing you have have and so we're going to bring in this army of professional services and that'll take two years and take three, mi three million dollars right sign here we'll get started and every time i was like wait a minute hold on a second first of all millions of dollars to get started i'm like yeah makes I no sense i don't have that budget but yeah. let's say i did you know what's more offensive than the money was the time yeah it's this, brutal this idea that like so i have this idea and i will have to wait two three years before customers are ever able to tell me if we're on the right track if yeah. this experience is any good. Oh, and then they're going to tell us a bunch of feedback and tell us what we really should have built. Yeah. And it'll be another two years and $2 million <laughs> before we get that built. I'm like, this is the opposite of software. Right. And so we started Twilio beginning of 2008 with this idea of saying, how can we bring software, or how can we bring communications into the era of software Hmm. And under the belief that the future of communications was not going to be about all those physical wires and, and servers and windowless buildings, but rather the future of how we as human beings actually make use of this technology, it's going to be about the software. Yeah. And who's going to build that? The software developers of the world. People like me who in their company saw ways to communicate with customers that would be better and just needed this in our toolkit. And so that's where we started.